Hi everyone, it's Karen here and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to explore one of the techniques that I used last week on one of my videos with the Distress Oxide Sprays. I did a video where I explored 20 different techniques with the Distress Oxide Sprays, which are the new sprays for Tim Holtz. And I really wanted to explore one of the techniques, which is using a gel press plate. And I really like using gel press because you can create amazing monoprinting textures. And I have the tags that I use on my video. These are all the ones that I did using the different techniques. And I promised that I was going to finish up another video to finish up these tags because they're part of a little journal that I want to do. This journal is by Joggles and you can put little discs inside here, which I'm going to show you at the end. So stay tuned. On how to finish up this journal, we can put stamping, some more stenciling, some messages, and so forth. So I'm using a gel plate. This is a 6x6 six six square gel plate, but you can use any size. Because these are small, it's easier for me to use it on this type of plate. I also I am working behind my Tonic Studios Tim Holtz mat. This is the glass mat, but what I did is I moved the actual heat resist mat to be in the center here. I know Tim Holtz works at it on the side, but I find it much easier when I'm working here in the middle. So uh, let's get started. And I want to show you some fun techniques that I'm going to explore with the Distress Oxide sprays. I'm going to put these tags on the side over here and I have all the sprays here in front of me. And I'll just grab tags and start spraying and start adding elements to each one of them. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to spray a little bit onto the background. I did shake all of them beforehand, so it's easy to just create. So I just want to add a little bit of the ink on some of my tags just to change the color a little bit. And I do have them on both front and back. So I think it adds like a lot of a little bit more distressed look onto this. And it makes it look really nice. So you can use your gel plate the same way as you use your mat where you can just add color to your tags or to your journals and so forth. Now I want most of my tags to kind of be similar, not the same, but I mean in terms of colors. So I'm trying to kind of match them up a little bit and add some color that will work well with all my tags. I really love the, the cracked pistachio. It really makes a beautiful combination of color and it's my favorite color obviously i don't know if you know that but it's one of my favorite colors like an aqua looking color so some tags don't even have anything in the back so i want to kind of close them and cover i mean i want to kind of cover them with different things i think it will look make it look really nice so you can create those distressed stains in the back this one looks really cool. I can leave it like this. Let's see which one I can still work on. Some of them are very plain. So I just want to kind of add things to them. So first I'm starting with one color, but I'm going to show you some other techniques with the plate as well. So instead of using it just to create monoprinting, I'm more using it to like stamp the different areas of my tags and making them really distressed. This one is already this color. Oh, this one needs a little bit. So if you haven't watched my video on all these techniques, go ahead and watch it. You can have it. I linked it already and I have it linked at the end of the video as well. That way you can see all this dif these different techniques that I, I did with, with the Distress Oxide Sprays. I also have a video where it compares Distress Oxide sprays with Distress Oxide inks and um, it really is nice to see like the difference of what kind of things you can do with the different inks. So I just continue adding things onto this. I'm not doing much to this. I just want to kind of match up all the colors so they all have a little bit of that cracked pistachio here 
that way they'll look a little bit more even when I'm adding it together because it's all a mini album like maybe like some messages I will add to it as well so I want to make sure that they all kind of match up so here now I have all of them I think all of them have a little bit of that green and that's nice now for my second layer so let's grab some purple this time and add this to the background and then I want to add a little bit of purple here I find it it will look nicer so the gel plate really creates amazing textures because you can create those splatters without having to actually splatter on the background so you get those amazing splatters without having to do much this one already has purple let's add some purple onto this so the splatters come out really really cool so if I were to spray directly onto this it will it will come out something like this which is a lot so I want to make sure that I only press it a little bit and that's okay if it happens it happens so I think I want to work just with the stamps so let's do that but I want to still add a little bit of purple in all my tags if they don't have it already so yes I did uh, add the cracked pistachio first but I think the purple adds some of it as well and let's go to the last one and add a little bit to the uh, edges as well well let's see if I missed any any of them that don't have the purple and some are even missing the back I might as well spray these they might look better that way there is some of them are missing some spray there we go so let's see if there's any that are missing sprays because I want to kind of cover all of them the nice thing about distressed oxide inks is that you can layer them and layer them and layer on top and nothing happens and even if they become a little bit brownish they become distressed which is beautiful as well let's see what color do I want here okay and some purple right so I'm trying to kind of match all the colors together okay and let's smush some of this here so you can smush directly from the cards themselves see I don't like it when I spray I should use the mat I should use the gel press and not specifically just spray on top because I really want them to look distressed so I'm changing what I'm doing right now and instead of just working with them the way I did before I am going to just kind of cover the background so that way when I stamp it looks even now they're all basically covered I see now that all the backs are covered okay that's better I think if both front and back are covered I am doing better that way so now let me show you with the stamps which is so I have these stamps they're from joggles they're joggles foam stamps and I'm really excited to just kind of try them out and I'm gonna use a darker color for them and there's two ways of doing this I mean I could like I said spray onto this and then create markings but because it's a spray it doesn't work as well so it works better if I actually dip my stamp in here and then stamp onto the onto the actual tag and it creates this really really cool distress look look at that how cool is that so I'm going to kind of use these on some of them not all because I don't want the same stamp going on everything but I think this is very cool so these stamps create amazing effects okay now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this over here so then I can actually stamp properly and I don't even need that much ink it kind of just does it on its own I have other stamps to try so I want to show you the other ones as well but these are really cool they create like very neat borders so I'm just using the brown because that will show over other colors 
This is the walnut stain, if anybody's wondering. And I don't have to use much. That's the nice part about it. It kind of uses whatever is on this on this gel press. Now, if I spray directly on the stamp, it might not give me the same effect because the stamp will be too wet. There we go. So I don't want these, as I said, on all of them, but let's let's do some. So I'm just creating this texture. All right, good. Now I'm going to use a different stamp. I have this stamp, which is this was designed by Kat Kerr, and it's also by Joggles, and it kind of has like writing on it. So I thought that would be neat to use as well. And I know I'm kind of being messy here. Oh, this is not working so well. Let me put some more. Let's see where I can stamp that. There we go. So it gives you that really cool writing. And I'm just working back and forth so you can see that I'm putting one some on top of another which you don't have to do, you can. I have too many tags, that's the problem. I kept on experimenting with so many different tags, so that's why. Now let's do the, I'm going to do the bottom part. Obviously not the whole tag fits on it. I mean, not the whole quote fits on it. There we go. Now let's see what other stamps I have over here. This one I think is really cool. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of blue to it. I've already used it, as you can see, with pink. Okay, let's add a little bit of blue stamping. But I'm going to, let's see, spread. Let's see what happens if I, I just press on all of them. Okay, some of them came out on some. You see? How cool is that? Let's turn this around. There we go. So just one little stamp makes a huge difference. There we go, this one is done. This one has the pink one on the back side. Let's see, this one is done. Okay, let's add some more. Some of them will show more than others. So you really get that distressed look. And not, I'm not gonna add to all of them. Some of them need it more than others if they're like, this one didn't work. I think this one has that distress, I'm um, sorry, that has resist. It has embossing powder on it. This one looks really cool. I don't want to touch it. Let's see in the back of this one, you see it has a, so I just pick and choose which ones I want to use. There we go. Let's see in this one. I really want to use this one. So let's add some here. So I really like the stamping part of it. There we go. This one I like, I don't want to touch. So it depends on which one I like and, which, and how I like it. I, I might not like do anything to it. So I feel like if it needs something, I will add. If it doesn't, I will pass it along. Let's see, this one I think needs a little bit. Let's see on this side as well. Yeah, these circles really make a difference. But I do have some other stuff that I want to try out. This burst, for example, I want to try this. But let's see, what color should I use? I'm thinking I should use some yellow. This is a fossilized amber. Let's see how it will look on the background. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't show as much here, but let me show you on a wider background. There we go. Very, very neat. Okay, good. Let's see what other backgrounds I could use this one on. Maybe this one. Just to add a little bit of that effect on the back. So I'm just kind of finishing these tags. I want to just add things to them. Let's see, what else? This one doesn't need, let's see, no, you can't see it on that one. Okay, what other tag? Oh, this one is a good tag to add it to. So again, you don't have to add it to all of them. It's just a matter of kind of pick and choose. 
the one that you want to add some texture to. There's lots of very cool textures from the stamps. Let me see, there's another one here that I wanted to test, this one. This one will kind of give me a more of a focal point. So I want to use things like the vintage photo. Or maybe even combining two colors, maybe the vintage photo with oops, the fire brick. So there we go. That's good. That's like a two color wheel. There we go. And let's bring something. So what I'm doing is I'm like literally stamping two of them at a time. That way you kind of create that effect on both sides of the tag. So it will be distressed on one side and then in the other it will be different. Okay, this one looks nice. Oh, I like, I want to put some on this. There we go. Let's see what else I have here. Oh, this one has not even been done anything to. We need to work on this one. There we go, now that's better. Okay. That's good. So, I mean, most of them I've worked on. And if I missed any, I can always add it later. So now the other option that I have is that I can actually distress the edges as well. So I like doing that as well. I'll show you how easy it is to do. So for example, I'm going to put some of the vintage photo here. And then I'm going to go and just dip my edges around. Oops, that was too much. Don't, didn't mean to do that so much. So this came out a lot. And I have to do both sides, obviously, because both my edges are done. Both my tags are done on both sides. So it might be a, get a bit messy for my hands. But you see what I mean? Let me show you again, because this one went too strongly on it. So for example, I take the tag and I just rub the edge onto it and it creates that really nice border. So I'm going to do that to all the tags, okay? But I'm not going to show you everything on camera because that takes too long. But look how nice of a tag this looks. It's very distressed and very, very cool. So I'm going to do this to all my tags and then I'm going to come back and finish them up. Okay, now that I've edged all the tags on both sides, I want to add some splatters to them. So I thought to use the same color and just put some of it on my mat over here. I could also put it on the gel plate, but I move the gel plate aside and all I'm going to do is use a paintbrush to create splatters. So all the different tags are stacked, so they won't be covered everywhere, which is the idea that they'll be all diff they will all be different. I'm using the walnut stain, but you can use any of the colors to do this. And on this side a bit as well. And I would have to turn the tags around. There's some that are kind of hidden here underneath. So I need to move things around a little bit. So it will show. And then I would have to turn them all around and do the other side. So, I mean, I'm just going to finish splattering. It's, there's not much science to this. I just want to create splatters on the background. So let me finish those and then I'm going to show you the next step of how to finish these. I picked some of the tags that didn't have enough busyness to them. So for example, this was busy on this side, but pretty plain on this side. Same with this one, it had some markings, but some of them didn't have markings. So I decided that I'm going to add a little bit of stenciling, but instead of adding it with the gel plate, I thought to just add it with a dabber. So I said that I would take the brown again, which is the walnut stain, and just spray it on my mat. 
and then take my dabber and just create a little bit of pattern in certain areas not everywhere because I didn't want it to be all perfect and you can see that there's a little bit more pattern here let's try on this one now you can't really see the brown so maybe I'll switch to a different color this one over here the the ox the cracked pistachio and let's try a different stencil for this one just to see I mean it gives it a little bit of an extra texture which it didn't have before but it's still not showing as much I think it has a lot of layers as it is still want to add a little bit to it to it just to add a little bit more color the other idea that I had and I thought this would be fun to complete the tag with is to use these dies from Tim Holtz that create texture so if I could cut them out then I would have texture on the tags as well so let me show you what I mean so what I did with some of the tags is that I run them through the Vagabond machine or like a big shot machine with my with these dies which I've actually had for such a long time and never used them and I created texture on the tag so some tags I left intact and some tags I actually cut out and created texture so it looks so cool let me show you so for example this one I did just a corner this one is like bricks and you can also save the little pieces from inside which I did but I don't know if I'm going to use because I don't have patience to start gluing them on then there is this diamond one harlequin there is this one you see like it's really really neat I use this one on the side over here and this one here then you see your echo you could use it all in the middle or on the side I did the alphabet over here and another brick one so really fun to create the texture I actually learned this technique I saw Kat Kerr doing this and I was really excited when I thought like when I saw her do it and I thought oh I could do that as well so now what I want to do is before I actually assemble everything I want to put a little bit of brown ink at the edges here to just kind of distress it a little bit more because it's 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 going to show better that way so I have to do both sides of course so that's it only at the edges of the of the cut up area just a little bit because otherwise you can't even tell that it's there so there we go now it shows a little bit better this one shows pretty well but I still want to do that okay this one has a resist on it so it's really hard so just showing the edge a little bit better because otherwise you can't see so this one you can see pretty well so that's okay oh let me see the back though now the back you can't see that well and this one again the same thing I just want to kind of do the edges so you can see it better Let's do the edges for this one. And if you add too much, you can always remove and make it look more distressed. So that looks good that way. There we go. And then I'm going to assemble everything. Now I can go ahead and basically add them in between each other. So for example, I can pick this one to go here. And when you're cutting, make sure that you obviously don't cut where the journal meets because otherwise it won't look good. So I'm kind of putting one on top of the other. Hopefully I have enough of both. That way it will look it won't look distressed everywhere 
and you can see the pink in between so that's very very cool okay so this will be basically my little tag album now I'm going to attach it to, to the discs so it's all bound so I grabbed three discs these are from joggles where these watercolor tags are from as well and all I'm going to do is just basically attach the three rings I mean sorry four rings I need one more I'm going to attach the four rings to each other and then create the album doesn't really matter which order you put them in because you can flip it all around so I guess I'm going backwards now but that's okay look how easy it is to just put it in and create this really cute tag album now I could add images and more stamping if I want to but I think I'm going to just add some sentiments and messages to some of these tags and maybe some strings to the holes but that's about it I don't want to add much more I think it's going to become too much if I add more to this so there we go and now I can flip through these if I want to and it looks really neat so now I'm going to add some messages here and then I'm going to be done so I decided to add this little mini Hamsa die to the front cover. I really connect with this image, but that's going to be the only image that I literally have in my little tag book. I added little sentiments in most of the tags and I also added some trim and ribbon on some of them. So it would look really cool and distressed. So I'm going to glue this one at the end, but I just want to show you that I have oh not in these first ones but hold on here we go there so we st it starts from here I might add some more in the front as well so live in the moment be in love with your life live every day with inspiration so not every single one has them and I might add maybe I will add some images I'm not sure yet we'll see what happens but what I thought to do is I'm going to grab my foodaball pen and I thought to just first of all highlight the writing but I also could add a little bit of markings and some doodling or maybe some journaling that would be nice to add as well so for example I could add markings so it just adds a little bit more of me in here so you could add these type of markings and then other ones going down and I could basically do this to every page. So once I'm done doodling, and I mean, that just takes time, I will show you, I'll do like a flip through through the whole journal so you can see what I did. Because I mean, every page might be different and I just don't know what will inspire me to create things. And I might just leave some of it, like this one I love, I don't want to touch. And this one I could just, I mean, this one is beautiful as well, but maybe it's missing a sentiment. So some of them I not, might not want to do anything to it. And some of them might be too empty that I might want to draw something on it. So for example, be in love with your life. I might want to that, do like a, a heart or something like that. So I could also add like a border like I did right now. So this tag would look like this. And uh, I could maybe add a few more hearts over here. So, I mean, the tags could be all different. There's no really science of how to do this, right? I just want to kind of make them a little bit more distressed. There we go. So that looks really cute. I like that. So, I mean, any type of doodling works, right? I could even doodle around the designs or like make the designs in between like make the little diamonds so there's lots of different options for me to do when I'm doodling so I ended up doodling with my foodable pen all over after adding all the nice ribbon and trim and adding all the words I went ahead and just glued this image in the front and then the rest I just added some journaling 
and some doodling so it looks really really nice that way I really like the way it turned out you can see some of the images underneath I doodled lines and I even outlined some of the the embossed areas that I had done with the other one here is some more some more journaling so this turned out really nice Here's some more journaling, and you can see the butterflies in the background. I outlined them as well, so you could really see them well. And these ones as well. So all of the stressed areas turned out really nice. I could also stamp if I wanted to instead of doodling, but I ended up just doodling because it was fun i actually took this journal downstairs to the tv area and while i was watching tv i was doodling on this so it was not even wasting time and i could do other things as well which i love watching tv so that was good i really like how it turned out now these words are from tim holtz they're small talk words and they also come in black but i thought the white looked better here some of them have words and some of them don't and that's okay as well i outlined the flowers some more doodling and even this one with the heart which i really like and there we go and this is like the end of my little tag journal for all the other products you can check below in the description area if you liked my video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends on social media. Also visit me on my Instagram at Tamir, and just share everything and comment, press the like button. Thank you so much for coming and have an amazing day. Bye.